Despite Hurricane Helene making landfall on the southeastern part of the United States, its effects will be felt well inland, including the Great Lakes region. The time is 8.33 p.m. and it is September 26th. Welcome to another update from Great Lakes Weather. Hopefully everybody is doing well today. Um, we did in fact chase the severe weather setup that we had on Tuesday and we did capture a tornado um, that was on the ground very, very briefly just south of Pittsburgh. Um, you can kind of see the spinning motion that is occurring at the That's surface the there and then is rising into the mezzo. Um, so you, it was a very brief, quick spin up just like most the of the tornadoes were. Um, earlier uh, on Tuesday, despite the one in LaGrange that was a rather strong one, and you can actually see some videos um, across Twitter regarding that one. It was a pretty intense one. So hopefully everyone is still okay and recovering, picking up the pieces. It wasn't as volatile, wasn't a very volatile day, which is good. Um, we're always good that when it's usually a better off day um, rather than an intense day. So, but now we're talking Hurricane Helene, okay, because that's kind of the big news story. You're probably hearing about it everywhere. Um, across all of the different news media and weather media. But we're going to talk about its effects specifically on the Great Lakes region. Um, so it's going to make landfall in Florida likely as a Category 4 hurricane, um, a stronger Category 4 hurricane, um, intensifying extremely fast and moving at a rather quicker pace too, which is a part of the reason why it is going to um, get into the Great Lakes region. Now you're probably wondering, okay, it's entering the mid-latitudes. Why is it shifting back west towards the Great Lakes region if it's already moving kind of at a north-northeast pace. Well, that has a lot to do with a interaction it's, it's, it's going to be having with a trough that is moving in behind on the western side of this system. That trough is actually going to cause a little thing we like to call the Fujiwara effect, um, which will cause kind of a wrapping motion around um, this trough with the hurricanes. So the hurricanes going to kind of interact with it a little bit, and that's actually going to send the center of, um, her, well, what will be then tropical storm, tropical depression, Helene um, into portions of uh, southern Indiana, southern Ohio. And with that, in fact, you are going to see some winds that are carried along with that as well as rainfall. Now, how strong are the winds to be expected? Well, uh, the wind expectation that we have um, with this is based on some global models. Okay, first of all, take a look at the map of Hurricane Helene right here. This is the latest satellite imagery as of this time. Uh, it's not made landfall just yet. The expectation is that it'll make landfall closer to probably around uh, 11 p.m., I think, and it'll continue to cruise up through portions of Florida Panhandle into portions of Georgia, um, sending a lot of rain in North Carolina. There's going to be quite a bit of rainfall across the Carolina regions, um, and likely also even a couple tornadoes across the Florida Panhandle, maybe even into parts of the Carolina, of South Carolina, Georgia, maybe even parts of North Carolina also. So definitely be on high, definitely be on alert if you're um, on the eastern side of Helene, and then if Helene is coming in your direction, you're definitely going to want to be watching carefully for this storm moving in. But let's talk about the Great Lakes region here. Uh, let's focus on the time that it starts to move in. You start to see the winds kind of pick up already um, tomorrow morning across portions of Indiana and Ohio with wind gusts around 35 miles per hour. But watch as we go into kind of the middle part of the day on Friday. You can already see that there is some pretty... Um, pretty stark yellow starting to show up on in areas across southern Ohio. Again, this is just one model, so again, keep that in mind that with regards to these models, it could change. Um, Helene could weaken a lot faster than what the models are putting out, um, or Helene could um, come in a little bit stronger, but I think it's likely going to weaken quickly as it gets over land, but that's still the models depicting that there's potential for 60 mile per hour, we're definitely going to want to watch carefully because this could lead to potential for some power outages. And with um, some moisture starting to move in, could also lead to some uh, possible tree damage with that as well. So we're definitely going to watch this king carefully. Let's get a closer look at it um, from the regional perspective. Um, as we go forward, you can see, um, you start to see the wind gusts kind of shift into southern Ohio um, or closer to uh, 11, 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then as we get into the midday afternoon, uh, the stronger winds shift into portions of Ohio, um, the southern Ohio in particular, with wind gusts possible of up to 65 miles per hour, maybe even getting close to 70 miles per hour. Helene's going to continue to weaken, though, so they'll gradually weaken as um, this thing continues to move through. But you can see that it even shifts up into portions of eastern Indiana, western Ohio, which does include Cedarville. Okay, so Cedarville, you're going to want to keep in mind uh, that, that might, you might have some potential there. That Dayton region, 
um, areas in eastern Indiana, and that's later on Saturday afternoon. And as we get to Friday evening, you can still see the strong winds are kind of carried into portions of western Indiana, eastern Illinois. You can notice that Michigan's kind of missing out on the heaviest winds. Um, the center of low pressure is still further down to the south, the place where you have that stronger focus of those winds. But still, you will have some gusty winds up in Michigan of up to 40 miles per hour um, at times. So, And then gradually, um, as it continues to move through, still some strong winds in Illinois, but it'll gradually weaken and sat onto Saturday, and you can kind of see that the winds really die down much faster as we get into that time frame. It'll wrap back around south and then shift back in its eastward direction, typical for a mid-latitude storm of any kind. So that's kind of what is being shown. And again, another model is also showing a rather similar picture, uh, the Euro model. It's showing it a little bit more uh, scattered in nature, not really a focused band of strong winds. So again, it's going to be kind of sporadic with the with the strong winds. You can still see that showing 60 miles per hour, kind of a lower end, which I think is more, more feasible, probably around 60 miles per hour. Um, you can see that it also weakens it um, a little bit faster, too, with wind gusts in around 55 to 60 miles per hour. Still strong, but and still capable of causing power outages, especially with some potential for some rainfall that we'll see with this, too. In fact, speaking of rainfall, let's take a look at the rainfall we could expect for the Great Lakes region. Um, you can see that with this, um, it's going to be really focused still around that southern Ohio, southern Indiana region. The rainfall is going to really focus around that low pressure, but um, places south of, I'd say, uh, Van Wert, and then also part south of Fort Wayne could see an inch or more. And then south of Indianapolis, you could get even up to four to five inches of rain. So that's a lot of rain um, in a short amount of time. So it's definitely something you want to watch out for. I know that places further southeast are definitely under the limelight for rainfall. I know the Carolinas are probably going to deal with quite a bit of flooding. So it's going to be something to watch out for. Um, but that's kind of what is being depicted by the Euro model at this time. So heavy rain, strong winds, um, things that you uh, might want to just keep keep an eye on if you're in southern Indiana, southern Ohio. Uh, Michigan's not really going to miss the brunt of this. So um, just keep, keep your eyes peeled for that potential as Helene makes landfall over the next few hours. Here's some key messages about Helene. You can see his track on the right side over here. Um, and you also notice that um, with that, you have landfall across the Florida Big Bed region, and it shifts that to the west, following along with that trough. That's also um, kind of it's kind of interacting with, causing that Fujiwara effect, with storm surge potential around the Big Bend of 15 to 20 feet, which is rather significant. Uh, could be a catastrophic hurricane that moves through that area tonight, and it is going to be. So definitely make friends and family aware of this storm as it approaches and be in prayer for those who are going to be in the path of this storm. That's really a brief little overview I wanted to just give regarding Hurricane Helene. I know it's all over the news, so you're probably well aware of what's going on, but kind of a detailed little update for specifically the Great Lakes. It really looks like um, things will be more along, more quiet in terms of severe weather activity and tornado activity, at least for the next week. So I'll keep your eyes open, though. We'll have to see if the models change up to that point, but, and we will keep you updated. So thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you all later.